In this video, we work one last example of solving a system of differential equations subject to initial conditions using the Laplace transformation method, but um, it's using a different notation. I just wanted to introduce you to the notation so that you're aware that this is the same type of problem um, that we have been solving using the Laplace transformation. It's just written in a different form. So if we let this vector x of t equal this column vector with components x of t and y of t, then the derivative of x of t is just given by this column vector with components x prime of t and y prime of t. So this um, implies this, and you remember this from calculus three, whenever you're taking the derivative of a vector valued function, you just take the derivative component by component. Now the notation looks a little different from the notation that you used in calculus three, but the principle is exactly the same. You just take the derivative of the first component and you take the derivative of the second component. Um, now we're just thinking of them as the first row, first column entry in a column vector or the uh, second row, first column entry in a column vector. Okay, so if x of t equals this and an x then, then x prime of t will equal this, and then this expression um, can be rewritten as a system of differential equations involving x of t and y of t um, just through substitution of these definitions here. So x prime of t, that's the left-hand side, is this vector. And we're saying that that is equal to this coefficient matrix where all of those um, entries happen to be constants, times the vector x, which is given by x of t uh, times i hat plus y of t times j hat, if you prefer. Um, but I'm just thinking of it as a column vector. And then we're adding this other column vector here. t minus 1 is our first entry, and then negative t minus 4 is our second entry. Now, in order to write this in the more familiar form that we're comfortable with, we need to remember how matrix multiplication works. What this equation is saying is that x prime of t is equal to this. You take the dot product of the first row and first column here to get the first row, first column entry over here. So the dot product of negative one, negative two, or a vector with components, negative one and negative two, and the vector with components, x of t and y of t, is equal to negative one times x of t minus two times y of t. Now, typically we drop that dependence on t and we just write minus x and minus two y, or negative x minus two y, and we just remember that x and y depend on t. Now, what this says is we wanna take this two by two matrix and we wanna multiply it by this two by one column vector. Since those dimensions are the same, we can multiply them together. Um, and then when we multiply, the result has dimension two by one. So this is actually, when we take this product, it's actually a column vector that has um, a form just like this one. Um, but if we just take the first row and the first column, we get the first row, first column entry over here. Actually, I think I'll just, I'll keep that going. Let's leave that as a vector for right now. And then if we dot the second row with the first column, we get the second row first column entry here. So we'll do one times x of t plus negative four times y of t. And what this equation says is if you take this, that's that product, and then you add it to this vector here, then you get this vector over here. Well, when you're adding vectors, they have to be the same size. This is a two by one by a two by one. We can add those together. You just add component by component. So you take the first row, first column entry here and you add it to the first row, first column entry there. And the same thing here. You take the second row, first column entry here and you add it to the second row, first column entry there. And this vector is equal to x, this vector x prime of t, y prime of t. The only way these two vectors are equal is if their components are equal. 
So that means that x prime of t is equal to negative x minus 2y plus t minus 1. And y prime of t is equal to x minus 4y minus t minus 4. So even though this looks different, if you think of this as a column vector with components x prime and y prime, and you think of this x um, vector as a vector with components x of t and y of t, if you actually do the matrix arithmetic, so you do the matrix multiplication and the matrix addition, and then you set that equal to this um, vector over here, what you end up with is a system of two equations and two unknowns involving x of t and y of t. Now, similarly, this is saying x of 0 equals 5, 2. Well, x of 0 by definition is just the vector with components, little x at 0 and little y at 0. So this is telling us that x of 0 equals 5 and y of 0 equals 2. So this is our system of equa uh, differential equations. This is our, our set or pair of two initial conditions. And if we take the Laplace transformation of this and we use these init initial conditions um, to simplify those Laplace transformations, we can solve this system of equations using the Laplace transformation method. So I just wanted you to see and understand that this is actually exactly the same thing as this. Okay, so now let's now that we've written it in this way, let's apply the Laplace transformation method in order to solve the system of differential equations. In order to do that, I'm going to let the Laplace transform of little x be big X. Oops, that's a function of s, not t. I'm sorry, I'm taking Laplace transforms now. And let the Laplace transform of little y of t equal big y of s. Now these x of s and y of s are scalar functions. These are not um, vector functions. So after we have introduced our notation, we'll just take the Laplace transform of both sides of that first differential equation from right here. So we'll have the Laplace transform of x prime equals negative one times the Laplace transform of x minus two times the Laplace transform of y plus the Laplace transform of t minus one. Then the Laplace transform of the first derivative has two terms. We have s times big X at zero, or big X at s, sorry, minus little x at zero. And then we're subtracting the Laplace transform of x. Then we're subtracting two times the Laplace transform of y. And then we're adding the Laplace transform of t minus one which is one over s squared minus one over s. Then we use the initial condition, x of zero is equal to five. And then we wanna take this differential equation and rearrange it so that all the x of s's and y of s's are on one side and all of the functions that do not depend on x or y are on the other side. So with that in mind, I will add x of s to both sides so I'll have s times x of s plus 1 times x of s, which is the same as s plus 1 times x of s. Then I'll add 2 times y of s to both sides. And that's equal to 1 over s squared minus 1 over s. And I'm subtracting 5 from the left-hand side. To get rid of that, we'll add 5 to both sides, and we'll get that. So that is the Laplace transform of that first equation. And we're not done, we're trying to find x of t and y of t. So we, we've got a lot more work to do. And I'm just going to write my steps over here. We introduce our notation. And then we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the differential equation. And then we just rewrite it so that the x and y are on this side and all the functions of s alone are on the other side. Okay, let's do the same, same thing with a second differential equation. So 
So we'll have the Laplace transform of y prime equals the Laplace transform of x minus four times the Laplace transform of y minus, well actually let's add the Laplace transform of negative t minus four. The Laplace transform of y prime is s times big Y of s minus little y evaluated at zero. Then we have big X of s minus four times big Y of s plus the Laplace transform of negative t minus four. So it's negative one over s squared minus four over s. Then we use the initial condition. We know that y of zero is equal to two. And we write this differently. We want all of the x's and y's on one side and all the functions that depend on s alone or that do not depend on x and y on the other side. So I will subtract x of s from both sides. Then I'll add four times y of s to both sides. So we'll have s times y of s plus four times y of s. So it's s plus four times y of s. And that's equal to negative one over s squared minus four over s. And then I have this minus two on the left hand side. To get rid of that, I'll add two to both sides. So this is the Laplace transform of our second differential equation and it's just been manipulated a little bit so that all the x's and y's are on the left hand side and the functions of s alone are on the right hand side. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can solve this system of two differential equations with two unknowns. Now we could use elimination or the addition method. That would be fine. Or we could use Kramer's rule, which is my preference. I think I'll use Kramer's rule. Now, if you don't want to use Kramer's rule, you don't have to. You could multiply this equation by s plus 1 and then add them together and you get rid of x of s and then just solve for y of s and take the inverse transform. Or you could take this equation and multiply by the quantity s plus 4 and this equation and multiply by negative 2 and then you'd add those together and the y's would be gone and you could solve for x of s and then take the inverse transform. But I'm going to use Kramer's method instead. Um, so that's where we'll start. I think I just said Kramer's method. I meant Kramer's rule instead. Okay, so now remember what Kramer's rule says. It says that if you want to solve this system of equations, you can write it in matrix form like this. You list the coefficients of x and y here in this matrix. This times the vector with components x of s and y of s is equal to this, one over s squared minus s. And is that a plus five or plus an s? I think that's a plus five. Let me make it very clear to myself. And then down here, we've got a two minus one over s squared minus four over s. So we've got a vector with those components. Now Kramer's rule says that if you want to find x of s, you can find it provided that these rows, or alternatively these columns, are linearly independent from each other. And all that means is that this row is not a multiple of this row. Um, two vectors are linearly independent if they're not multiples of each other in much the same way that two functions form a linearly independent set if they're not multiples of each other. Since I can't take this and multiply by a constant and get this, and I can't even take this and multiply by a function of s and get this. Um, these are linearly independent and that means that this system of equations only has one solution. Um, if they were linearly dependent, you might have either infinitely many solutions or just um, no solution. But in this case, since they're linearly independent, we have one solution. Kramer's rule says that that solution is this. X of S 
is a ratio of determinants and the determinant in the denominator is the determinant of this coefficient, coefficient matrix, excuse me. And in the numerator, we have almost identical matrix, but for the first variable, that's the first row, first column entry here, we replace that first row, first column with this. And I actually did not leave myself enough space. But this column is going to get replaced by all of that. So let's see, what will we have in the denominator? If we multiply s plus one times s plus four, first times first will be s squared, outer times outer is four s, inner times inner is another s, so that's five s. Last times last is four. And then we are subtracting and negative two, so that means we're adding two. Now over here, I needed more space, so I made myself some more space. In that first column, we'll have one over s squared minus one over s plus five, and two minus one over s squared minus four over s. And we're replacing the second column with two and s plus four. When we evaluate that determinant, we end up with this trinomial times s plus four. So if I take this trinomial or something that's like a trinomial, it has three terms, and I multiply it by s, that gives me a minus s minus one plus five s. Now if I take this and I multiply by four, I'll have four over s squared minus four over s plus 20. Okay, so that's what I get when I do this times this. And similarly, we're going to multiply across that diagonal and subtract. So I'll take this, multiply by two, and then multiply the whole thing by negative one. So I'll have two times negative two, or sorry, two times two is four, and then I'm subtracting it. So I have minus four. Then I'll have negative two over s squared. We're subtracting that, so that will make that positive two over s squared. And then we'll have negative eight over s, and we're subtracting that, so that's gonna make that a positive eight over s. All of that is divided by this, s squared plus five s plus six. Okay, now we wanna keep going. We wanna keep simplifying where we can. And I think it might actually, well, first I'll simplify and then we'll clear the complex fractions. You probably don't need this much space, but that's okay. So let's add the, uh, constants over s squared together first. I've got four over s squared here and two over s squared, so that's gonna make that six over s squared. And then I have one over s minus four over s is negative three over s, negative three over s plus eight over s is five over s. And then we'll have 20 minus four is 16, 16 minus one is 15. plus 5s. Now, since I have an s squared here and I'd like to get rid of that s squared, I will multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by s squared over s squared. And I know it looks a little strange. This line is a little too long and this is far off in the middle, um, but it's just because I left myself too much space. So we have this. Now, if we distribute that S squared, what we end up with is a six plus five S plus 15 S squared plus 25 S cubed over S squared times S squared plus five S plus six. Now the question becomes, you know, does S squared minus five S plus six um, simplify? Can I factor it? Well, in order to factor it, I need two numbers that multiply to give me positive six that add together to give me positive five. Positive two and positive three will work. It's a lot of fives. So I'm gonna to try to make it very clear that those are fives and not S's. So this is actually S squared times the quantity S plus two times S plus three. 
because two times three is six and two plus three is five. Okay, great. So that's our X of S. It's written in this form. So we know we can go and use partial fraction decomposition from here in order to simplify this or in order to write it in such a way that we can use our table of Laplace transforms to compute the inverse transform. So we have this trinomial. I think I'll write it in the more traditional order with the highest power of s first. Since I have a repeated linear factor, I have two terms in my partial fraction decomposition for that. For this non-repeated factor, I've got that. And the same thing, thing for that one. Now we want to take each of these factors and multiply by the LCD. And there's not going to be enough space. So I'll have to write on a diagonal like this. Okay, and now let's simplify everywhere we can. The s squared over s squared will reduce, the s plus twos reduce, and the s plus threes reduce. One of these s's will reduce. The s squareds reduce here, and the s plus twos reduce there, and the s plus threes reduce there. So that's going to leave us with this third degree polynomial. set equal to a times s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. Then we'll have b times s plus 2 times s plus 3 plus c times s squared times s plus 3. And I'm running out of space, so I'll start over here. Um, plus d times s squared times s plus 2. Now, the first way that we can solve for a, b, c, and d is by setting each of these factors equal to zero and then solving for the appropriate value of s. So once we find an s value that would cause a factor to be zero, that's going to simplify the equation quite a bit. I would start with s equals zero because that's the easiest. And s is obviously zero when s equals zero. The left-hand side when s equals zero is just six. And then we'll have a times zero. Then we'll have b times two times three. So that's six times b plus c times zero plus d times zero. So we just end up with six b equals six. So that means b must be equal to one. Now I'll pick a different value of s that causes one of the factors to be zero. Let's let s equal negative two. Well, if s is negative two, we're gonna have negative eight, negative two cubed is negative eight. Negative eight times five is negative 40, plus uh, 15 times negative two squared. Negative two squared is four, uh, four times 15 is the same as two times 30, so that's 60. And then we'll have negative two times five is negative 10 plus six. And then we'll have a times zero because s plus two is zero when s is equal to negative two plus b times zero plus d times zero. The only one that's not zero over here is this c term. So we'll have c times negative two squared, which is four and negative two plus three is one. So if we simplify this, we have 20 minus 10 is 10. Uh, 10 plus 6 is going to be 16. So we have 16 equals 4c. So that means c equals 4. Great. So we've got b and c so far. Now let's see what other factors can we set equal to 0. s plus 3. s plus 3 is 0 and s equals negative 3. So here we're gonna have negative 27 times five. And then we have 15 times nine minus 15 there plus six equals. And when S is equal to negative three, we have A times zero plus B times zero plus C times zero. The only one that's not zero is this D term. So we'll have D times negative three times negative three, which is nine and negative three times, or plus two is negative one. So we have that there. 
So this is going to be negative 135. And here we're going to have 15 times nine minus 15 times one is gonna be 15 times eight. 15 times eight would be um, 80 plus 40 or 120. Okay. So we'll have um, negative 135 plus 120 is negative 15. And negative 15 plus six is negative nine. So you have negative nine equals negative nine D, which means that D equals one. Okay, so we've got our, our B, our C, and our D, but we didn't find A. So please ignore that. That was from a different problem that I was working on this paper. Um, but if I wanna find A, I'm going to have to plug in a different value of S. Now we've, we've already chosen all the values of S that cause all the terms or number of these terms to be zero. We've chosen all the values of S that cause S, S plus two and S plus three to be zero. Um, so we need, need to just pick another value of S, one that's easy to evaluate everything at. Let's ju just choose S equals one because everything is easy when S equals one. Then we'll have 15 or five plus 15 is 20. Uh, and then we have five plus uh, six is 11. 20 plus 11 is gonna be 31 on the left-hand side. And that equals A times one times three times four. So that's A times 12 plus B times, if S is one, that's gonna be three times four again, also 12. If S is one, we have one squared times four. So that's four plus D times, one squared plus three or times three, which is three. Now we already know a number of these. We know B is one, we know C is four, and we know D is one. With that in mind, we can substitute and we can simplify. If B is one, this is just a 12. If C is four, we have four times four, which is 16. If D is one, we've got a three there. So this is, um, 12 plus 16, which is 28. 28 plus three is actually 31. That's convenient. So 12a must be zero if we subtract 31 from both sides. So that means that a must be zero. Okay, that's great. So now we have the partial fraction decomposition for x of s. It's hard to remember that that was x of s, but the partial fraction decomposition of this is actually this expression where a is equal to zero. So we'll have zero over s plus b over s squared. So it's gonna be a one over s squared plus c over s plus two. So four over s plus two plus one over s plus three. And that is our x of s. So we had a over s, which was zero, zero over s, which is zero. And then b was one, and we're dividing that by s squared. And we had an s plus two and an s plus three here, and c and d were four and one. So c was four and d was one, okay? So now we have written x of s using this partial fraction decomposition of x of s, and we can compute the inverse transform in order to get x of t back. The inverse transform of one over s squared is t. And then we have a constant four times one over s plus two. That's one over s minus a, where a is equal to negative two. the inverse transform of one over s minus a is e to the a t. So this will be e to the negative two t. This one will also have an inverse transform given by this rule, that a is negative three here. So we have e to the negative three t. So that's our x of t. Now, since we know what x of t is, we could solve for y of t, 
by using the same method. So we could go to this system of two equations and two unknowns and use Kramer's rule to solve for um, y of s and then compute the inverse transform. Or we could just substitute in x prime and x here and then solve this equation for y. I think that will be easier um, rather than using partial fractions, um, well, using Kramer's rule to find y of s and then using partial fractions to rewrite y of s. But if we use this method, we should be careful. Um, of course, it should work out just fine if everything is correct, but if we've made a mistake, we might be wrong. So if we use this method where we just replace x prime with whatever it is in terms of t and we replace x, um, our solution for x here and just solve this for y, we should confirm that x of t and y of t also satisfy this equation and they satisfy both initial conditions. So I think that's what I'm gonna do this time. I'm going to solve for y of s by substituting x here or y of t by substituting x here. And then once I have y and x, I'll substitute those into the second equation to make sure that that's satisfied. And we'll evaluate both functions at t equals zero to make sure that that's satisfied. Maybe we should check this condition first. Let's check and make sure that x of zero is equal to five. Oh, I think it's obvious that it is. When we substitute t equals zero, Here, e to the zero is one. So we have zero plus four times one plus one. So four plus one is five. And x of zero was supposed to be five. So that first condition checks out. Now let's solve for y of t by substituting x prime and x here and then solving for y. And then let's check and make sure that y of zero is actually equal to two. So from our first differential equation, we had x prime equals negative x minus 2y plus t minus 1. So if I'm solving this for y, I can add 2y to both sides, subtract x prime from both sides, and then we'll just take that and multiply the whole thing by 1 half. Oops, I guess I could write it in that order instead, that's fine. Okay, so according to the first differential equation, y should be one half of negative x prime minus x plus t minus one. I've got x of t right here. Let's find x prime of t and substitute and then substitute x here and then we'll find out what y should be. x prime of t is the derivative of this guy. With respect to t, derivative of t to the first is one. Then I have four times the derivative of e to the negative two t, which is e to the negative two t times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. The derivative of the inside is negative two. Then I have e to the negative three t for this last one. Derivative of an exponential is an exponential times the derivative of the inside. Okay, so that's x prime. Okay, let's substitute x prime and x into this equation and solve for y. So if we've done everything correctly, we have one half of negative x prime. So we'll multiply this by negative one. We get that right there. And then we're subtracting x. So we're subtracting t and we're subtracting four times e to the negative two t. I'm going to add vertically now. And we're subtracting e to the negative three t. Okay, and then we're going to add t and subtract one. And all of that is multiplied by this negative one half over here. So if I want to simplify that, I have one half times negative two plus four e to the negative two t plus two e to the negative three t and these reduce. And if we distribute the one half now, we get this. Now let's check 
our second initial condition said that y of zero was supposed to be two. So let's check that out. I'm just using placeholder notation. And I substitute in t equals zero. So I have negative one plus two times e to the zero, which is one plus e to the zero. The one and negative one reduce and we just get a two. And y of zero was supposed to be two. So that works out. Great. Okay. So we know that y of t and x of t satisfy the first differential equation because that's how we found y of t. Um, and our assumption was that using Kramer's rule was enough to get us the correct x of s, and then we just computed the inverse transform using a little bit of partial fraction decomposition. So we're assuming that x of t is correct. But in order to be sure, we need to check that second differential equation. We've checked both initial conditions, provided our algebra was correct, this first equation is satisfied. Now we just need to check and make sure that y prime is actually equal to x minus four y minus t minus four. So that's the second differential equation that we'd like to check now. So I would start on the left-hand side and that means I'm computing y prime. So I want y prime and remember y of t is right here. The derivative of negative one is zero. Then I'll bring my two down. The derivative of e to the negative two t is e to the negative two t times the derivative of the inside, which is another negative two. Then over here, I have the derivative of e to the negative three t. That's e to the negative three t times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, and we get that. So the left-hand side is negative four e to the negative two t minus three e to the negative three t. Our hope is that after simplification, the right-hand side is going to be exactly the same function. So the right-hand side is x minus four times y minus t minus four. So let's add this vertically. I think it'll make it a little bit easier. So I'll put x of t here in this first row. So that was t plus four e to the negative 2t plus e to the negative 3t. And then we're subtracting 4 times y of t. And I'm adding vertically. So I'll distribute a negative 4 to all of these and then add like terms in the columns. Negative 4 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 4. There's no constant term in any of these columns, so I'm creating a new column. Negative 4 times this is going to be negative 8 e to the negative 2t put that in the e to the negative 2t column. And then I have negative four times that guy. Okay, and then we're subtracting t and we're subtracting four. When we add all those together, let's see what we get. The t's reduce, the four's reduce, and we get negative four e to the negative 2t minus three e to the negative three t. So the right hand side is equal to this and the left hand side is also equal to that. So you have left hand side equals the right hand side. And that means that the second differential equation is satisfied by these two functions x and y. And that means that both differential equations are satisfied, both initial conditions are met. So the solution of our system of equations consists of two functions, x of t equals this function and y of t equals this function. Now, we started with something that looked like this. So the form of our solution should actually be a vector with components x of t and y of t. Since we just found x of t and y of t, we should put them in a vector so that the solution to this system, or this, we can think of it as a first order equation involving vector functions and matrices, um, the solution to that system is actually a vector as well. So let's write that down. X 
of t is a vector with components x of t and y of t. And x of t had this form. It was t plus 4 times e to the negative 2t plus e to the negative t. And y of t had this form, negative 1 plus 2 e to the negative 2t plus e to the negative 3t. And that is a solution of this form of that original system of equations. So you can think of it as um, a single first order equation involving a vector valued function, or you can say it's actually a system of two equations with two unknowns, x of t and y of t. So I just wanted you to be aware that this is the same thing as this problem right here. Um, and it can be solved using exactly the same method that we talked about in the other videos about solving systems of equations.